coming up on Network Africa. Former Defence Minister João Lourenço takes oath of office to become Angola's new president. Armed policemen deployed outside Election Commission in Nairobi ahead of planned protests by Ralo Dinga's main opposition coalition. Jordan government calls for better clarification of U.S. travel ban and invites President Donald Trump to reconsider decision. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Millicent Mwoka. We begin with João Lourenço, who has been sworn in as Angola's president at a ceremony in the country's capital, Luanda. Well, this is coming a month after the ruling MPLA party won the elections. Lourenço, a former defense minister, replaces José Eduardo dos Santos, who stood down after 38 years in power. Critics say that ex-president dos Santos will retain control over the party with the right to choose the police chief and head of the army and that one of his children, Isabel dos Santos, has been positioned to control the economy. The MPLA has governed Angola since it gained independence from Portugal in 1975. Well, for more perspective is Dr. Ferdinand Otto, a lecturer of the Political Department, University of Lagos, and he joins us uh, by the telephone. Welcome to Network Africa. Um, João Lorenzo, a former defense minister who's been sworn in as Angola's president, replacing Jose Eduardo dos Santos, who has ruled the country for 38 years. Can we expect anything different? I mean, with both men from the same ruling party. Is it a case of putting new wine in old skin? Well, that, uh, thank you for having me on. Uh, the new president has been very loyal to the, uh, the Santos, and it is expected that uh, he will have direct influence, so to say. But we must not forget that the Santos have been very strong in keeping Angola from 1975. It is also important to note that uh, being able to groom a successor you know, we must acknowledge that and give it to the Santos, which of course that most uh, African leaders don't groom their successor. So it is expected that uh, they will be very loyal. So it's not just about putting a uh, uh, new wine and old uh, bottle. Uh, the new president was the defense minister. So he has been able to see uh, a lot how the, the Angola politics is all about. So uh, it is very clear that uh, it is a new development, at least after 38 years of being in power, the Santos, who was a member of uh, uh, MPLA, you know, and of course, if you remember the struggle, Angolan struggle for independence, the MPLA was in the forefront, even though that uh, that particular time, if you recall very well, that the the, the, the UNETA, you know, was one of the major uh, contenders for power. But because the popular choice was MPLA, so, and uh, this new president, uh, you know, being in, the, in that particular party is a development. Of course, most people would argue that it will amount to, you know, entrenching a kind, a kind of one-party system. But taken from the history of yeah. Angola itself, we must acknowledge that uh, it's a new development. So it's not just about putting a new wine in a new bottle. Okay. And that old bottle, rather. Doctor, so a good development. Dr. Otto, sorry to cut in, but, you know, Angolan opposition activists have been making recent comments. That's uh, Nuno Dalla. He's critical of Lorenzo's nomination, saying power in the country will remain in the hands of the military, given uh, that Lorenzo is a general. What do you think? Can you take the question again? Sorry. Well, I was saying that Angolan opposition said something uh, critical of this nomination of Lorenzo, saying power in the country will remain in the hands of the military, given Lorenzo's education in the military as a general. No, it's not. It's not. It's not the issue of the uh, the, the, the the power being in the hands of the military. No, it is not true because, of course, if you if you understand the the. Uh, 
is to understand their politics, right? So the 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 the, the, the man who was the defense minister now becoming the president. There is nothing. I don't see anything that is wrong in it, you know. Uh, but what is important is that it's a democratic government, and you be able to do things within the the principle of democracy. So it's not just going to be uh, the issue of uh, the, uh, being a military and now becoming the president and so on. So that is the way I will, uh, you know, I will see that particular uh, argument of some people. Reports that the ex-president Dos Santos will retain control over the MPLA governing party. Uh, do you think he would continue to wield influence as leader of the party, bearing in mind uh, the Godfatherism factor? Mm, it, 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 yes, it will, it will influence. It will influence. It. it will have influence at the initial stage. It will have influence at the initial stage, but after some time, the influence will wear away because you know very well that. Um, uh, when you when you when you capture power, right? It is different from when you are not, uh, you know, uh, in the position to to take decision. Now the president is taking decision, right? The president has been elected. After one or two, uh, maybe at, at most one year or two years, it will have full consolidation of power, and uh, the Santos will we we no longer control him. So that influence will begin to. The way, you know, somehow, you know. So, and of course, as a successor, he will, uh, he will learn from his uh, predecessor. He will learn. So after some time, he will now understand the intricacies of governance. And of course, uh, like we say in political science, that uh, power, right? Power is the basic, the basic ingredient. And now that he has, uh, uh, he has gotten the power, of course, he will be able to utilize it very well. So mm -hmm. the, the Santos will now begin to play the role of a first man, and as, uh, as, 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 like we say in Nigeria, as a godfather. All right. Thank you so much. We've been speaking to Dr. Ferdinand Otto, a lecturer of political uh, department of University of Lagos. A Kenyan MP, Ongili, better known as Babu Owino, well, he has been charged with insulting President Uhuru Kenyatta. According to local media, Mr. Ongili has been charged with two counts of subversion and uttering abusive words against President Kenyatta. The prosecution argues that there are compelling reasons to hold the MP in custody, as Mr. Owino's lawyer says the prosecution's application was not backed by any document. The lawmaker was arrested by police on Monday after allegedly making derogatory remarks about President Kenyatta at an opposition rally in Nairobi.